Silver Downer Gambling Hall in Verde and got away with over $10,000. And four nights ago, they had hit the bank at Big Rock City for their biggest haul and had killed the night watchman as well. This had happened within 10 days, within 50 miles of the town of Twin Rivers. So because there had been army money stolen from the bank at Big Rock, the government had asked me and my saddle pal, Red Connors, to step in. Well, from what you told me, the men who held up the bank and the mine must be the same outfit. We're positive of it, Cassidy. And we've checked with the man who ran the gambling hall at Verde. His description of the men tallies with ours. And you say in all three cases there was a posse out after the robbers within ten minutes of the holdup? Yes. They must have left some kind of a trail. They did. A clear one. But each time the posse's lost it. What kind of posse do you call them? You give me and Hoppy any kind of a trail and we'll follow it. <laughs> I doubt if you could do any better, Red. In each case, the trail of the three horses led a few miles out of town. Then the very same thing would happen. The unsaddled horses would be found with the footprints of the men who had ridden them Vanishing into thin air. But what about the brands on the horses? Again, the same thing would happen. They were always horses that had been stolen from some nearby ranch. I'm afraid you got your work on this job cut out for you, Cassidy. Yeah, I'm afraid I have. With 50 square miles of territory to cover with a fine tooth comb and not too good a description of the men to work on. Well, I'm sorry we couldn't have been more helpful. Well, thanks for coming over. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Yes, we'll keep in touch with you. It looks like we're in for a little excitement again, Hoppy. That should please you. Sure does. You know, things have been altogether too peaceable around here for me. Where do we go from here? Ah, uh, first we better start checking up on any strangers in the territory. And now's a good time to begin. The sooner the better. for a lecture on my fighting sinful ways. What do you mean? That peddling Deacon Denby's coming back into town. Uh, it might do you good. Come on, let's Hoppy. go. Hey, that's a stage driver with him. It hurt. Something's happened. fell among evil people, Brother yeah. Cassidy. We can see that for ourselves. What happened? Three men held up the stage at 10-mile Ford. They killed Dennison, who was riding shotgun with me. Then they took the express company strong box. But I winged one of them before he creased me. Then what? Well, then I passed out. And when I came to, they had cut my, my horses loose. So I started walking on down the road toward town. And I was just about to pass out again when... The deacon come along and pick me up. Boys, get him over to the doctor right away, will you? Thanks, deacon, for what you've done for me. No need for thanks, son. I merely did what the good Samaritan did many years ago. Okay. You go along now. Thank you. Deacon, uh, you live out around 10 Mile Ford. You didn't happen to see three men riding together, all about 35, 40 years old? No, I'm afraid I can't be any help to you there, Marshal. 
I come to town to see if some goods that I needed had arrived, so I took the shortcut from my place to here. I saw no one until I picked up the stagecoach driver just outside of town. I see. All right, thanks. We better get out there before that trail gets cold. You know, Hoppy, I sort of like that song singing old coot, even though he does lecture me every time he sees me. Oh, he just does it for your own good. See, you don't think I do wrong, do you? I mean really wrong. Of course not. You just do it the hard way. Oh, there you go again. Oh, cheer up, Red. We may get into trouble yet. Today, maybe? Today, maybe. Red and I had picked up the trail of three horses back at the stagecoach and had followed them as they circled the hill to come back near the road a mile from the holdup. So far, so good. But here, where we found the saddleless horses, this robber began to take on the same pattern as the others. There were the clear imprints of boots of three men and just as suddenly the footprints had disappeared into thin air. This time they had left a clue, a blood-stained handkerchief still damp. And another clue, the tracks of a wagon that had stood where the footprints ended. Now I had a clear idea of just how the bandits had gone about the business of throwing pursuers off their trail. Just before their robberies, they had hidden a wagon in some nearby place. After the robberies, they had ridden stolen horses to the wagon and had driven off, leaving no trace. But this time somebody had slipped up. The right rear wheel had been repaired with a rim plate and the track of it left a definite trail that was as easy to follow as a signboard. We followed the wheel track across 10 Mile Ford and it kept leading toward town. Then at the crossroads, we lost it. A train of freight wagons had turned in from a side road and their wide wheel rims had completely erased the track we were following. Now all I had to do was look for a wagon with a repaired rear wheel. And there were probably dozens like that right in our own neighborhood. Then all of a sudden a thought struck me. The stage holdup could have a second purpose, to lure the law away from town. After all, the bank in Twin Rivers was one of the richest in the district, and the tracks had been headed that way. think it wouldn't be? You're darn right. The trail of them hold-up men's wagon was headed right and toward we town. And we lost the trail. Uh, we just wondered if you'd had any unexpected visitors. The only unexpected visitor we've had today is my friend Denby over there, and of course you men know him. Yeah, sure, he's a friend of ours too. He's one of my best depositors. Keeps a large account here. Almost a hundred dollars, ain't it, Denby? Yes, sir, Brother Boyle. Ninety-six dollars and forty cents worth of the root of all evil. It, when the sum reaches a hundred dollars, I trust you'll send it to the missionaries fund as usual. Yeah, I was just having my little joke, Denby. I know what little you do earn goes for a good cause. Well, thank you, brother. I only do what all men should do for each other. And now I must go. I'm leaving early in the morning on another trip, and there's several chores that I must attend to. Oh, uh, Marshal... I'm sorry you weren't successful in your search for the bandits. I should have enjoyed the opportunity to wrestle with Satan for their souls. I'd just like to wrestle with them. Oh, Brother Connors, you were born to be a man of violence. Will you never learn that the meek shall inherit the earth? Oh, I know all about that. Them who live by the guns die by the gun thing. You mean those who live by the sword, don't you, Red? Well, swords or guns, it's all the same. Ever try shooting a sword? Well, the only meek ones I ever knew ended up by inheriting only a small plot of her six by four. And someday, brother, I hope to make you see the light. Won't do a bit of good, Deacon. I've been trying for years. Perhaps if he listened to my talk this evening. Are you going into another one of them long-winded sermons? Yes, it's my last chance to exhort the sinners of Twin Rivers on this trip. 
Thanks for warning me. I still hope to see you this evening. Good day to you, gentlemen. Good day. Good day to you, sir. Well, I'd keep my eyes open anyhow. I'm not worried about the stagecoach bandits. They're probably long gone from this district by now. They're smart. Too smart to put another job so close to the last one. That's what bothers me. They're just smart enough to figure that a lot of people have the same idea. Cassidy, I'm considered an intelligent man, and I'm willing to bet on my reasoning that I will not have a visit from those same men. Well, I hope you're right, but I wouldn't bet it your way. Come on, Red. See nothing? Oh, come here. Take a look at that. Remember seeing it before? Now that's the same track. Right smack dab in the middle of the street. Well, my hunch was right. Well, anything's liable to happen now. Let's get back to the office and sweat it out. Where are you going? I'll be back in just a minute. I'll go to make a little bet with Mr. Boyle. <laughs> Listen to me and hear me say again and again, repent, repent and make your future bright with happiness. You wastrels, you idlers, you deniers of all that's good, cast out your sinful ways and come into the light. I haven't finished yet, Brother Connors. Purify your souls and you will know peace everlasting. Now I've traveled this beautiful country of ours from one end to the other, preaching the word. Sure is a long-winded old coot. Took him a half hour just to get warmed up. Yeah. Now, you've been very patient. But if you'll just do as I've told you tonight, then you'll reap the reward in this life as well as in the next. Well, thank you, brother. I'm not an ordained minister, nor do I have any particular faith or creed. I just have an unbounded love and feeling of fellowship for all of mankind. And if my words here tonight have brought better understanding that... Why, thank you, brother, thank you. To any one of you, then I'll depart a happy man. And now, my friends, I must say farewell. Farewell, and peace be with you until next I visit our fair village. And remember the word for tonight. Repent. Repent and make your future a bright and happy one. Amen. I thought he never would get to that amen. Neither did I. You know, Hoppy, listening to the deacon made me think that maybe he's got the right idea about me after all. How's that? Well, I mean about always looking for trouble and, like you say, doing things the hard way. I wouldn't try reforming all of a sudden. The shock might be too great. I'd better walk across the bank. I got a feeling something is about to happen. You have? Uh-huh. Good. shoved a gun in my face, made me open the safe. I finally managed to roll to the front door. How long ago was this? Oh, almost an hour ago. Did they get much? Well, they cleaned out the safe. Thousands of dollars worth. I won't know exactly how much that I've gone over the books, 
And right under your nose, too. What about that new burglar alarm? The one that's supposed to run on batteries. Ah, uh, they cut the wires. Well, they must have known plenty about the bank in advance. Your burglar alarm and your habit of working on your books on Friday night. Well, what are you wandering around for? Why don't you find out who did it? I know who did it. The same men that held up the stagecoach this morning. Well, don't stand there. Go on out and get them. Looking for them in the dark would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. We'll go at them the first thing in the morning. A uh, fine officer of the law you are. First you go to sleep on the job and let him clean me out. Then you give him half the night to make a getaway. If I was you, I'd turn in my badge. Now you listen to me, you fat-headed little numbskull. Hoppy told you what was what this afternoon. If you'd listened to him, we'd have been staked out in the back. But oh no, you were too smart. They wouldn't think of coming here. Why, you... That's enough, Red. Now, that's all right, Hoppy. I guess Red's right. I do owe you an apology. Uh, you save your apology until I bring in the bandits. Uh, we better get a couple of hours sleep. We'll have to start out early. Now, uh, you relax a little. We'll catch up with them. All right, Hoppy. had picked up the trail in the alley back of the bank and had followed it for a couple of miles across country. leading us to a little used road that led to the old Benson homestead a few miles out of town. It was exactly the same pattern as before. Here on the road were the same wagon tracks and the same footprints of three dismounted men vanishing into thin air. The wagon tracks were leading to the Benson house, less than a quarter of a mile away. And now I began to see who was behind the whole setup. Just ahead, I knew I'd find the three bandits and the man who had driven the wagon, the mastermind. And the fourth man was... Put up your hands, Cassidy. My gun's in the middle of Red's back, so don't touch yours. Don't move, Harvey. They got you covered from every side. Yell. Keep Cassidy covered so Steve can get his guns. I've outsmarted you again, Cassidy. When your stupid friend here said you followed the tracks of my wagon, I decided not to underestimate your intelligence. I knew you'd be on the trail as soon as it was daylight, so I backtracked to here. We'll take him to the house. Denby was smart, all right. He had made a down payment on this place when he had first come into the Twin Rivers district six months ago. This was his headquarters, where he could hide the loot from the robberies each time he returned from his trips. And nobody would ever suspect him of being the brains back of the bandits. Hold it. Get the wagon, back it up to the door. Get in. Sit down there, back to back. Tie him up. No, don't use that rope. Here, use this buckskin thong. These will look real good on you, Deacon. Why, these are beautiful, Cassidy. Yeah, I think I'll keep them always to remember you by. There, that ought to hold them, Deacon. Get that stuff out of the hiding place under the floor of the parlor. Put it in the wagon. 
Gil, give him a hand. I'll take care of these two until you get the wagon loaded. Well, Cassidy, I guess you've pretty well figured out by now how I operated. How I carried my men from place to place, hidden in the back of my wagon. I've got a pretty good idea. Yeah, with your intelligence, you would. I admire you, Cassidy. Too bad you had to get yourself in a position where it became a question of you or me. It couldn't happen to anybody. There's a fortune in those boxes. The result of months of careful planning. I trained my men below the border, kept them hidden there until I was ready to act. With your brains, you could have been a rich man and gone about it the honest way. Perhaps. Too late to think about that now. Well, Red, I suppose you're wondering what I'm going to do with you and Cassidy. I'll bet you're not figuring on helping us live to a ripe old age. You're quite right. You know where the Black Canyon quicksands are, Red? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Shortly, I'll load you and Red in the back of the wagon along with my men, and I'll drive to the quicksands. And the men and I will drive on without you and Red. Do I make myself clear? It'd be a lot easier if you just done away with us here. Easier, perhaps, but not wiser. Hop along, Cassidy, and Red Connors must disappear completely, without a trace. Then when your horses are found, it's possible that someone at Twin Rivers will conceive the idea that you two were in on the robbery. Hey, no matter what happens to Hoppy and me, the law will catch up with you one of these days. No, I don't think it will. The law always takes care of your kind. Not in my case, it won't. Because I've planned the future as carefully as I planned the past. That robbery at Twin Rivers was the final one. And as soon as I dispose of you two, I'll drive on across the border. There, I'll pay off my men and disperse them, and I'll live in luxury for the rest of my life. Gil? Gil? That's the last of the boxes, Deacon. I'll be with you as soon as I get my personal belongings. I'm sure no one will recognize me as the man who was once known as the peddling deacon. Red, 
said you've always wanted to be a mule skinner. Get up there and get at it. You all set, Brother Cassidy? All set, Brother Connors. <laughs> There'll be a weeping and a wailing and a gnashing of teeth, especially that weeping and wailing. Come on, mules, I got a bet to collect in town. Goodbye until then.